What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be fooling around with a brand new early access title called Unfortold Witchstone, which from most of the media and things that I've consumed, seems to be a game about a team of sort of techno fantasy CRPG adventurers that are riding some kind of buzzsaw train across an apocalypse or something. We're going to find out, alright, I'm unfamiliar with the setting. But they fired over the game this morning, we're going to go on in, we're going to do some early access impressions gameplay, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or something that doesn't suit your fancy. If after watching this you wanted to get the game, I got a link for you down below in the description. Then on top of that, I've also got a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. Let's go ahead and dive on into the game. This one may get cut a little bit longer just because you can never tell with these RPGs. Oh, oh no. The mother continent. The cradle. Long divided into two warring empires. Avundus and Nethic. Avundus dominated by elves of culture. Nethic ruled by liches where undeath and slavery prevail. If freedom is the ability to live life as you want to live, to go and do as your whims or interests take you, freedom survives nowhere on Orwindar. Hope does survive. The hope that freedom can be found on the frontier, untamed land of Kalsundia. In Nethic, folk toil on farms or fight the endless, futile war against Avundus. Rebels and all who show their slightest sign of thinking for themselves are slain in a way that transforms them into undead, then controlled utterly and forever. In Avundus, Individuals who show potential are forcibly bonded when young, their loyalty to the Empire magically ensured. You are one of them, bonded, so at any time your bond could be awakened to control you. A slave for Avendus, expendable, and from all you've seen and heard, likely soon expended. Yet you've also heard just enough to grasp at hope. There is one place in all Horizon where you can be free. Where your bond can be broken. Carl Sundia, the untamed land of Thunder Beasts. A frontier where many who followed their hope before you have gone. Where local factions long ago defeated the armies and navies of Avundus and Nethic in the Carl Sundia Independence War. Factions like the Commonwealth, where just plain folk rule, not mighty lords. And the Free Legion, an army who fight for order and justice. And the Brightwind Clan, who create wondrous tools and weapons that call on the powers of the mysterious and mighty Witchstones, the Jewels of the Gods. These factions and many more fight each other like snarling beasts for rule over Kalsundia, for it is a rich land indeed. That's why ships galore still sail to it from Avundus and Nethic and back again. They bring the resources both empires need to survive. Everything we need comes from Kalsundia, where witch stones float gleaming in ruins and deep mines, and folk and beasts alike roam free where you can still forge the life you want to lead and change the world to be what you want it to be. You can be who you want to be and make Kalsundia what you want it to be. So everything you need lies there, waiting for you in Kalsundia. So it looks like there's three different actual groups we can play as here. What? The dwarves are like little demon guys in this game, dude? I kind of dig that. Uh, dwarves are bearded and apparently have horns in this universe. I'll take it because honestly, I've always maintained that the main martial art of the dwarfish kind is headbutting, so 
So a couple things on character creation. It seems like there's a decent amount of customization available here in between picking your background, which is your starting equipment, your ancestry, which changes whether you're dwarf or elf, and then humans kind of have the D&D thing going on where they get extra proficiencies, but no ancestry powers. Uh, there is a weird flicker going on with the sliding bar over here on the left that lights up all the time while you're fiddling with things. It's a little bit distracting. And then the color of your skin on the dwarf does not seem to be representative of the actual color of the dwarf it seems to be combining it with red and also it doesn't look like it recolors your arms to go along with whatever your facial color is too we do get to pick a class between fighter cleric rogue wizard and so i'll probably go with cleric i guess i do enjoy Ooh, a war priest yeah i could take that right there i do enjoy a good DD cleric i can't help myself and in customizing, it actually sort of follows that same 3.5, 5.0 D&D layout. So we get to pick some abilities here. I took a Divine Blast that I can shoot at people. I took the War Domain, which gives me some other things that I'll be good at. There are a number of domains here. There's Law, War, and Strength. I went with War because, like, I'm a War Priest. And then you get to pick a couple spells. I took Bane, which puts disadvantage on people. And then I also took a healing spell because, you know, what's a cleric without a healing spell? So as far as stats go, it also appears to be using a very D&D-like system over here, too. I'm not familiar. I'm sorry if this is annoying to all of you. I'm not acclimated with Project Witchstone and whatnot. So if this is a pre-existing universe that's a direct spin-off of D&D or something like that, and I'm flubbing the whole thing up that's my bad i was unaware of this universe but that's the stat array that i've gone for right now won't let me go higher than 15 for my wisdom normally with a cleric i'd like to get that up to 16 or 17 if i'm using point by but it is what it is as far as skills go i'd probably take a little bit of persuasion doesn't look like I can go t too deep on in there, and so I just did the same thing that recommended added on in, which worked out fine. We are a Witchstone Power Dwarf War Priest. Witchstone Power Dwarf War Priest! I don't know, it kind of feels like a heavy metal song to me. As your vessel nears Calcundia, pirates emerge. The gun whales have slipped aboard. Wake and fight back, else find a knife at your throat. I like how there's just like this random guy peeking out from behind, hiding behind a pillar over there. I'm gonna have to battle these fools, aren't I? I'm gonna have to shovelificate them. All right, let's shovel him up. Ow, dude, I've been shot. I hated every part of that. It looks like I can only move six meters on my turn. So we'll go ahead and try to base contact with that guy right there. I'm going to treat this for all intents and purposes basically identical to playing D&D &D with the decisions that I'm going to be making and the way that I choose to play the game. Since is Divine Blast, is that a thing I can do without taking like a retaliatory hit? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it knocked him the hell out. My man got absolutely bodied right there. What's up with the slow mode right now? Oh, I guess I do have, like, a bonus action left. Once per short rest, gain 20% resistance. Ah, I'm not going to waste it right now if it's once per rest. Okay, that's fine. Zero damage is acceptable. Let's try to bludge this guy. 90% chance to hit. Biggs and Wedge got beat to death with shovels. Gotcha. They all gone? Is the fighting over? He looks around and sees only bodies. Not harmed, I hope. Another successful voyage for us. You're first to Cal Sunday, I can tell. I'm Captain Ames, and this is my world. Order, tidiness, on time, and a minimum of fuss. So what's yours? You're making Cal Sunday a your world now, huh? He comes closer and squints at you. What lies ahead for you? Any plans? Or are you just more of Vondans trying to run from your compulsion bond and get it broken for you there? Um, I'm not sure yet. Ames can't help but smile. He's heard that answer many times before. I've been faring you folk and, er, you and folk like you from Orwindar to Calcundia for years, more than I'd like to count. We're almost ashore, where I'm afraid you're about to learn what freedom really means. You're on your own. No one's looking out for you, except as a target to kill or rob, so you need to look out for yourself. Well, I took care of the pirates, didn't I? 
Your first hurdle is going to be getting yourself off the lower docks and into the rest of Calsundia, the dangerous but better part. I hope you're good at negotiating. It helps if you can smile like you mean it. It gives you one of the most crooked fake smiles you've ever seen. Like that. Only better. My advice to you? Make the right choices. Yeah, dude. Just don't crash. Exactly. Just do all the right successful things. It's so easy. Wish you luck, Travander. Our traveler, welcome to Calsundia. Like the lighting effects that that lantern's throwing right there. That actually has a nice soft glow to it. Yeah, the place looks friendly. As you make port, uneasiness stirs the air. The lower docks of Calsunder have been, oh, makeshift shelters harbor migrants waiting for admittance, but the main gate remains closed and well guarded. They're doing that thing that games always do where the text scrolls too fast before you can finish reading it. It's a bit, I'm telling you, it's a recurring problem that has come up over the course of the last year or so. I've noticed there's a ton of games that just make their text scroll super fast. Faster almost than you can read it in your head sometimes. Who are you? You smell fresh now, but you won't last long. Soon you'll be on the brink of your last breath, just like the rest of us. Use your intuition to read the person and find out something useful? Sure. Is that a good roll or is that a bad roll? I don't know what target I'm shooting for here. Studying or you don't read or conclude anything. Uh... Can I ask you to... Oh, wow. You can, like, ask people to join your party? As a companion? Wild. Well, now I have to do it. So, while influencing others, knowing the traits of your target increases your chance to pick the approach that most likely to succeed. To discover hidden traits, you can use the insight skill and dialogue to get a read on the person. Ooh. Okay. Well, I mean, sweet talk? Let's try that. A narrow success. That's what I like to see. You receive a nod of approval tempered by a roll of the eyes and a lopsided smile. I'll come with you. I've always dreamed of putting myself in mortal danger instead of keeping to my safe, sane daily routine. <laughs> well, at least she's self-aware about it. What does she do? Is she dope? I guess I've got a homie for right now. I don't really know what else, like, plays into that. She's only got 4 HP and her only magic spell is called Broccoli, which heals 4 HP. So I'm guessing this is kind of like a Neverwinter Night style game where you mostly play like one character. She seems to just like follow me around. I guess we'll find out. Pay the fee to Durald at the booth. Okay. Durald in the booth. Another migrant from the mainland. Tell me, soggy waif, which barge captain ferried you here? Ames. Soggy, wretched barge hand. He's going to lose his boat for this. Listen, migrant, it's an honor to meet me, okay? As Chief Lawblade over the lower docks, you pay me taxes. Any payment will do, but our Windar artifacts and sounds fair best. What'll it be? You need to square our deal to enter. That's my rule. Yeah. Negotiate to not pay the tax? Let's try to read him real fast with insight. We can do this, dude. It's a wisdom roll, target 15, it's going to be fine. See? Look at that right there, dude. The dice are spicy. The spicy dices. He's a coward, no doubt in your mind. He will not face any serious threat. Okay. I would like to not pay the tax then. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We don't pay taxes around here. He nods. You sense that the threat worked. You may enter untaxed, but stay away from the main gate and don't test me. Otherwise, you'll face labor in the sunk ship. The sunk ship does not sound pleasant. I don't want to go to the sunk ship. What's up, man? As Calsundia lives, you've arrived. When the docks closed, I feared you'd be denied port. Do I know you? Forgive me. I'm Mayrun Wavewinter. I know of you, and I was sent with instructions to escort you inland, but then I found myself a prisoner here. The lower docks have been corralled, blocked off from entering the port city. Half the migrants are waiting patiently until the main gate opens. The other half are plotting their escape. He moves closer to you and lowers his voice. I side with the latter. We need to break free and reach the port city train. Who sent you? 
I'd better not explain that here. Law blades are everywhere. We need to get to the train. Calsundia's territories are too widespread to reach on foot. If we don't act soon, our way of escape is going to close. There is a law blade, Els Druthdrang, who guards a maintenance shaft into the wet run. The sewer leads directly to the train station. In exchange for the right payment of an Orwindar artifact, Els will look elsewhere, opening the way. Bribery isn't my first preference, but in a port city like Kalsundar, it's probably the safest. Ask about an accord? The only way out is through the sewer. I'd rather neither of us face what festers there alone. Whether beast or brute stands against you, my elementalist expertise will blast them down. I welcome you. Brilliant. For Calsundia's sake and our own, we're going to forge ahead. He's got 14 HP. Maybe I should... I don't know, like, if she's going to be cut out for this. You know what I mean? Like, he's actually got abilities and stuff. Like, this lady has 4 HP and broccoli, which I think is probably not even a cantrip. All right, I got rid of her. It appears as though you can, like, freely recruit, like, anybody off the street that you want to, though, which is kind of a really, really interesting feature of the game. We got to find the Orlandar artifact, and then we got to get down into the sewers. That's my takeaway from this entire experience. So here's our guy. Let's see if maybe we can sweet talk our way down in there. I bet you've been through the ringer sailing on high hopes from the mainland only to be confronted with a closed port and entry tax. Doozy, huh? Sorry, traveler. I'm Els Druthdrang. Friendly law blade at your service. Um, have you heard of me by chance? I've heard of you. In that case, please understand the reputation going on about me is completely ill-founded. I need a special Orwindar artifact to pay for a sage. I'm not a swindler. I'm actually in poor health. The way out of the lower docks is through the sewer. The gate behind me could suddenly become accessible if the right artifact appeared. Catch my drift? What a deal. Okay. Let's inside him real fast. Oof. Okay, never mind. I take it back. Apparently, we aren't inciting today. Although, a challenge rating 15 for low-level rolls like this is pretty rough. I get, the, I get the feeling the DM that designed this is a bit of a brutalist. Can you tell me anything about yourself? Ah, I'm aging and achy. I'm expected to stand on my feet all day with the sewer's wretched stench filling my nose. Hey, how would you like a job like mine? Now I got swollen ankles, terrible... Okay, we get it. You're old and you're cranky. Or when our artifacts are pretty rare. Every single one is handcrafted, sealed, and branded. Bell brand is the one I need. Ask around, track it down, then freedom is yours. May sound like a steep fee, but think of the alternative. Sit idle here, be a prisoner, or use the sewers to get to freedom. Ladder's risk-free. Return with the artifact and you'll see. All right, well, I'm going to go ask around about the artifact. All right, so asking around with a bunch of the people in the neighborhood, it sounds like there's a guy named Andrath who smuggled in a whole bunch of artifacts. I've been running around for probably a little bit, like five, ten minutes just talking to NPCs. They aren't labeled or anything, so they don't have like a little icon above their head or whatever to let you know that they have quest relevant information. So you pretty much, it's, it's old school. You pretty much just got to walk around and talk to people till you find the prompt. Let's see if we can locate, locate this Andrath idiot and what he's got going on. Ah, I think we found our guy. This is the person that everybody says has one of those artifacts, so I think this is our only way out of here. There was a rogue that offered to join my party that said she could trick the guy to get out of the way, but since I'm doing kind of like a lawful war priest thing, I figured I'd roleplay it and we'd try to do this the semi right way. I don't know, dude. Every single path forward is corrupt. Pardon my warehouse, Newlander. I'm not proud of its condition. Doral Tontour promises to reopen the docks. He promises business is going to be back to normal. Till then, he prefers we make do, no questions asked. No one save me has faith, not even my daughter Neetha. She picks fights with the law blades every chance she gets. It's driven a wedge between us. She avoids me and lingers near the edge of the docks and won't tell me what she's planning. If my hunch is right, nothing's safe. I think we're supposed to get a trait up there that allows us to figure out how to influence them, but it just says trait every time it pops up. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it just fills that in right there that she he's the parent of Neetha Homrand or whatever. I don't know. We get like a little printout of every single person we've ever met and how much they like us. What hunch? The silence around the docks is calm before a rebel storm. The law blades won't stand aside willingly. They're going to fight to the death. Natha believes she must wage war on the guards or test her luck in the wet run against the sewer beasts. I don't agree. Okay. Insight, maybe? I've, I don't really have the greatest chance of success here. Hey, I'll take that. That's not bad. 
sharp suspicions behind his eyes tell the tale of someone who has weathered hardship, a cynic who has seen enough betrayal and broken promises. He will be difficult to persuade of anything. Okay. Els Druthdrang is a law blade willing to defy orders for a price. In exchange for an artifact, he'll smuggle escapees out of the lower docks. There's a catch. Els is using Cal Sunder's sewer system inhabited by thunder beasts. He's convinced all who will listen, even Neetha, that danger that no danger exists. I've got an heirloom, one of the rarest Orwindar artifacts called Bellabrand. I'm ready to part with it. If you convince my daughter to return here and give me another chance, I'll give you the artifact. Oh boy, we gonna have to save scum this one, I can tell. I am not a talky character. I'm a gruff old dwarf who rocks and stones to the bone and doesn't care about other people's feewees. Eh, I think she was up here. There she is. Alright, let's talk to her. We got 55% insight right there. That's a decent roll. I'll take that. That's a solid success. So... Propensity to talk makes her easier to read, which you just did. She's chatty. Okay. How do I enter the city? With the Hope Gate blocked, the only way out is through the wet run, and that's being guarded by L's. I know he's sniffing around for artifacts, and if you give him one, he'll let you through. Can you do something for me? I think this will probably work. Look at all those bonuses right there. What if we, what if we like, take her back to her dad this way? Tweeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
I would definitely like to see some kind of, you know, paladin, barbarian, somebody that can just be out front. Oh, good. Our pathfinding blocks each other. Fantastic. The creature's mangled body is still warm. It was a sloppy kill, but a kill. Cracked quarter staff. There's crates and stuff. Well, hold on. I gotta loot them first. Silver bracelets. Oh, you can move objects. That's kind of cool. I dig that. I would have honestly never figured that out if the game had not told me. I would have sat here forever being like, I just don't understand why this game has to be so confusing. <laughs> Alright. I guess we'll go through the big... Oh, yeah. Just open the door for me. That's cool, too. Yep. A dull hand at... I mean... The inventory system's a little bit weird. It's a little bit odd. I'm not exactly sure how it functions, but you don't have an individual character page for every single character from what I can tell so far. You've just got like your inventory and like everybody else's inventory. And then I guess you equip things like so. And I guess when they have like a best in slot item inside of here, they just automatically equip it. Kind of a strange system. But I guess we'll feel it out later. Like, I'm definitely... I'm getting kind of like Neverwinter Nights feel. Oh, there's guns? I like the idea of guns. Light blue vest, some suns, a heal, healing po... Okay, I'm gonna put some of these healing potions on, like, my little hot bar right there. Just in case it ends up becoming relevant. Just sort of feels like the kind of thing I want to have up there. I like the idea of having a gun. Who uses guns? So 2d6 martial weapon with a minus one to hit. Maybe we put it on the rogue. Doesn't look like she equips it. It is a martial weapon though, so it's probably something for like a warrior if I'm being honest. Oh look, dude, there's little critters over here. Let's save our game, just real fast, just in case, because you never quite know. Look, little critters, I come to battle you. Oh, they're moving on us, bro. Wait, am I wounded already? Oh, I put on a necklace, that's right. It looks like we do actually get to control people on the in-between of fighting. So I'm going to have you, like, cure light wounds. Just on the dwarf real fast. It's all good. You know, divine might, give yourself plus. It's a bonus action. We'll save it for later. We've got another action right now anyways. You go ahead and you have, like, magic missile or something in here. So we've got shockwave, poisonous mist, numbing frost. So we've got dark blast, flame blast, ice shards fire breath a number of things in here i guess go ahead and fireball him nice spell effect right there good and saturated i like it seven xp out we got another crawl jaw running up. oh no we don't never mind it's my turn all right let's go ahead and bash this dude's head in pretty solid chance to hit when you get enough xp you can level up your character damn i thought level one or level two for D, &D was like 1250 xp back in the day I've killed like three monsters and I'm already ready to level up, dude. Well, unfortunately, the fight hung on me. And so I had to like restart the whole thing. Luckily, with the turn order coming out the way that it did, we like instantaneously raffle stomped the enemy without any issues. But that is very, very concerning that in the second fight that we've been a part of, the game locked up. And just, like, wouldn't let me give any inputs, wouldn't let me do anything. They were just standing there. I'm guessing it's because the rogue's model was inside the model of the other cleric. Because she was inside of him, basically, and she, like, couldn't move. I don't know, though. I would only be speculating as to what caused the hang. Uh, we definitely want to level up our war priest to level two, so we'll go ahead and do that. We've got a few more skill points over here. I'm going to keep putting them into insight. Maybe a little bit into tactics. Uh, tactics allows us to read the enemy's proficiencies. We also have attributes to add on in. So we got smite. We get a holy weapon attack against a target. Nice, dude. Hell yeah. Can I do that? How many times a day can I do that? Oh, it costs a mana. Oh, I have mana points. Interesting. Okay, so there are some little curveballs to overall D&D gameplay here. I'll probably take Bless. I think that's a fairly standard, like, bread-and-butter cleric spell. Endless Conflict. You can move an extra one meter per turn. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. I'll take that. I leveled. Can I loot these things? We just murdered them, so I feel like I've earned the right to loot. 
No, there will be no looting. That's fair. That's fair. Hit that lever. Oh, I like how that door opens. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like a Robo Hobbit door. It's been a mystery why I'd been sent word to meet you until I overheard Thurl's premonition. Now I realize you're feeling the Avanda's empire. They bound you. The further you journey away from the mainland, the weaker the bond becomes, but you'll never be free unless you find someone to perform the unbinding ritual. This means I'm not meant to journey with you for long, but rather to guide you to your direction. Breaking a compulsion bond will come with conditions. I'm itching to share more, especially about my own Calcundian goals and those of the Bright Winds, but I'd like to know yours first. Um, I'll figure it out when I get rid of the bond, man. Howling Valley's a good place to find yourself, then. From what I've gathered, it's a small remote town that's full of drama. Okay. I can see someone place traps up ahead. That did not prevent the crawl jaws from eating this poor soul, though. If you don't feel comfortable disarming them, ask one of us to do it for you. Okay. Well, it looks like they've already been triggered to me. Oh, uh, okay, so we can order her to interact with things. Gotcha. That trap was scary. So I guess it's all context-based in this game. Like, you just click on the character and tell them the thing you want them to go and do, and they just assume what you want them to do, which should be fairly binary and simple to figure out. I'm a little bit weird on the inventory system, though. Like, I would very much prefer to have a character sheet for every single character if I could. Like, I want this, but for every one of my characters, and why that's not here... I find to be very, very vexing, I guess. Like, that's such a bog-standard sort of RPG thing. I guess it's because they're meant to be, like, secondary characters, but they're awfully talkative, and they have, like, personalities and stuff to be secondary characters, so I don't know. A potion of discretion. I don't really care about the human skull. We have limited inventory slots, so I'd, n I'd rather not get wild and crazy with it. We've got another switch back there for the loot back. Oh, we got a big dog over here. A Glaw Gout Hatch... That's a hatchling? How big is the adult? They also need to program it so these guys get the hell out of the way. So as I've been walking around, these guys block your ability to walk all the time and in fact can like trap you against walls and stuff. There's a lot of little oversights here that are definitely moving me away from a recommendation right now. Not because the writing is bad or the gameplay is bad so far. Uh, the gameplay, if it was not buggy, is actually pretty good. It just kind of feels like this one was taken off the burner a little bit too early. Like, they probably should have waited another six months to release to really polish and mash out some of these bugs. There's always going to be those people that are like, Oh, but it's early access. That's no excuse. Early access just means not feature complete. You know what I mean? Like, there are loads and loads and loads of early access games that come out with zero bugs that are super polished and are just implementing content. In my mind, that's what early access is for, just put the content in there. But with like game-breaking bugs, like your characters trapping other characters against walls, and combat itself just flatly locking up on you and forcing like a reload, uh, those, are, those are all things that I would definitely would have hoped to have had mashed out before going to a commercial release for sure. All right, so these guys are aware of me. Luckily, they just had to take their sprint action in order to close that gap. So everything should be fine. I'm just going to move her up. Human beings and elves apparently move 9 meters on a turn, which is like, how nice for you. <laughs> Me and my short little stubby dwarf legs. Yeah, the combat looks and feels great. I like the places that they've put slow motion in while you're choosing if you want to use a bonus action or whatever. Like, they've there's some, there's some strong ideas here that are feeling pretty good. It's just the bugs, man. There's something about having a game-breaking bug in my second combat and also getting characters constantly trapped on each other that has me worried about a recommendation here. All that at a $35 price point, too, which is like... Uh... <laughs> so that's, that's, that's a little vexing. I would say I definitely want to check this out 100% like a year down the line, basically. This is definitely a game I want to play. I like the bill of goods that they are selling. I want to check it out further, but I am a little bit worried by some of the, the early stuff we've run into here. Got a bow right there. Is there anything else we can loot around here? Does it combine loot spots? It does not. So that's going to be another feature that we want to see added to the game where every body inside of a radius should put all of its loot 
on the first enemy that you click basically automatically. These are kind of bare bones quality of life things that have been existing now in CRPGs for a good half a decade. And so they should just be standard fare at this point. They're in everything. Let's continue forward though. We'll open that up. Hello, it's called a lance. All right, so there's a lance laying on the ground over there. We've got a dead bandit on here. Quality play set. Oh, it's like a chessboard for five bucks. I do like that it tells you the value of the item when you take a look. Oh, there's another layer of sewers. There's also another potion of healing right there. Up we go. What do we have going on over here? A distracted crawl jaw is perfectly placed to sneak up on and push him off the ledge. The fall would kill it. That's like water. That's like seven feet, dude. Are you sure that would kill him? I'm not positive this would kill him. Oh, I've been caught. I'm just going to smash him in the head with a hammer. I'm just going to stick to my strengths and smash things in the head with hammers. I just, I don't know. Why get outside my wheelhouse or risk it? There's another shovel, dead guy, diary of the dead man. What else you got? Cure poison, commonwealth manifesto. I don't know if I should be looting all this stuff. It does look like my inventory is getting larger, maybe. Things do have weight, so I'm kind of wondering if the inventory system is a placeholder. Because if you've noticed, every single one of these objects has a weight on it, and yet nothing in here lists my encumbrance. Not one thing. So I'm guessing I'm actually getting the feeling this is a placeholder, which makes me feel a little bit better. Because this is not an inventory that I would release with in a CRPG. I would have all the character sheets and everything else if it was me. So... That actually makes me feel a little bit better that I don't see weight listed anywhere. I don't see encumbrance listed anywhere to go along with the attributes that are listed on these items. Because that means this is like a work in progress. So that's good. Although one would assume that even in early access, you would once again um, kind of want the inventory system to be implemented. That's a basic UI feature. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Oh. Oh, cool, he stepped on the trap so that I wouldn't have to. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you move up, I guess. Oh, did I accidentally sprint? I accidentally sprinted. Okay. It's fine. We have, we have other turns to play around with. I think when I moved him, I was just barely on the yellow like that right there, and that's what threw me. I mean, if you got a fireball to hit him with, what is... Darkness bolt. Oh, there's line. Okay. All right. All right. So as it turns out, projectiles do not pass through human beings. Are we still in combat? Oh, we're still in combat. So there's something else here that wants us a problem with us. All right. Uh, what wants a problem with us? Are those even aware of us over there? Maybe set up right there. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, they are aware of us. Okay. That's what I was hoping would happen. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, if you could move over to there. Hey. Hey. Move over to there. There you go. Nice little... I mean, there's punchy sound effects here. Honestly? So, yeah, I think I, I stick with my, my previous... My previous... Statements. This is a game that's clearly... Oh, that sucks when they reset their positions. She stepped on the trap. This is a game that's clearly going to be dope once they, like, polish all of the patina off. Like, because there are details in the right spots. The spells have good effects. They feel punchy. They have good sound effects. The animations are very swingy and weighty, and the characters look like they're running with equipment on. There's good attributes here. Thing There's good things here. It's just the fact that I had a game-breaking bug in my in my second fight that really has me like, uh, you know, especially given the fact that there's tens of thousands of people that are going to see this video and what I say will directly influence a purchase. I want to play this. I want to play it more. I like what they have on offer, but it needs a little bit more time on the skillet to get the polish issues taken care of, in my opinion, and also get things like maybe the inventory system i mean i may be talking just out of my asshole here but get the inventory system the character sheets all that kind of stuff sort of hammered out as well 
before I would want to fully dive in. What is like everybody have a conversation for me? Hear those growls? Those are the teeth. There are crowl jaws ahead. Time to time to be masters of battle, as they say. The Howling Valley is our gateway to the future. We got to get to the train station. All right. Oh, he's got like full three on conversations that he wants. To. Okay. Fair enough. My man's got stuff to say. Mm, will she auto pick doors? Oh, I've got to give her the lock picks that are currently in my inventory. There we go. All right. I'll give her the lock picks. And then we'll have her pick the lock. Hey, it worked. All right. I know how video. Hey, get out of the way. I'm trying to go through this. Will all of you move. God. Just make it so characters can clip through each other. That's the easy solution here is just remove the collision from the characters outside of combat. It'll look a little bit unprofessional, but that's while I figured out their pathfinding to make them move the hell out of the way. Um, I would just get rid of the collision altogether on characters. Train station. Is everyone friendly here? Is anybody going to try to hurt me? We're going to Hogwarts. Anybody want anything off the trolley? The hell is that thing, bro? They got the Apatosaurus out here? All right, the bright winds, Wichadar magic. What a sight to behold. No wonder tensions in the lower docks get ignored. This is where we got to part ways. Get yourself a train ticket. I'm certain you're going to discover invaluable kinships in the Howling Valley. All right. Cool, man. Where's the ticket? At this hour, they're sold out, so you're going to have to persuade a ticket holder to forfeit a seat. Good luck. Always a problem in D&D, isn't there? There's always a damn problem every single time. All right, so we got to figure out who the ticket vendor is. I think that's our first big step. You only have 9 HP? That's pretty bad. Oh, no, that's concussive blast. I don't want to use that on you. But I do want to heal you a little bit because 9 HP is not great. Like, I hit for like 8, so ouch. Is a merchant over here? Take a nap. Shops are closed until the train departs. Oh. Okay. I wanted to sell some of the stuff in my inventory, maybe. All right. Well, let's go find some affluent-looking moron to bilk out of his ticket. Today, we will board a Brightwind train, but that does not put our brigade at their mercy. The Brightwind clan may have their Wichadar gadgets, but they do not have our numbers. We are the Commonwealth. Our futures are secure. Calcundia favors our greater purpose. All right. Nobody around here seems like they're... Oh, this guy's noble. This guy's noble right here. He's got a fancy hat. Hey, would you like to shine like Wichadar Magic? Ride the train with me and you'll shimmer like a gem. Imagine sitting side by side as we head to Howling Valley. I'm a Brightwind investor, so my money belt is full. Just love to share my wealth with you and my seat. There's going to be a catch. I've got a ticket in hand. Do you have yours? Could you spare an extra one? Verily, you're in vain asking for a train ticket before we get to know each other. I have my one and only ticket, and I have no intention with parting with it just yet. Uh... Insight him. Hey, all right. So how do I work this guy? What do I got going on? He's a coward. Ooh, I'd like you to give up your train ticket. And I'm going to threaten you. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Give me that train ticket or I'm going to bust that orbital with my dwarven headbutts. He squirms. He gestures in resignation, yielding to you. That's one way to force my hand. Take the ticket. Ride the train in my place. I'll be keeping score, mind you. You'll give me something precious of your own down the line. I don't think I will. I don't think I will. I said that I was going to punch you in the dick, and you instantly gave me what I wanted. That means this has probably been happening since, like, the third grade. This is probably, like, just another added to the pile of a lifetime full of folding and having no fight or spine in you. Uh, yeah, let's get on the train. Why not? Here's my ticket. Technically, we need like three tickets, right? Yeah, let's get out of here, man.
Oh, cool, dude. We've got, like, a little world map out here. The Witchstone Power Train races across the desert faster than any conveyance or beast of Orwindar. You barely feel bumps or shaking. As you finally have a chance to relax and see the passing scenery of Chalcundia, you feel weary. Your eyelids get heavier and heavier. A faint voice speaks inside your head. You will soon reach a crossroads, bonded child, and I shall pay close attention to what you decide. What do you want from Chalcundia? Uh, I will side with the oppressed? The lesser factions can help you. You will meet one very soon. Support their struggle against the dominant ones, and they will help you get unbound. And with that, a voice behind you gets louder and louder. I don't know your stories, and you don't know mine. When we get to Howling Valley, we step into our faction role. That's the power of the Commonwealth. We act on the faction's behalf, and nothing we do, nothing we say is wrong. Why do the beasts not enter Howling Valley? Oh, what do we hit? Oh, train robbers! I'm gonna be honest with you, despite my, my grognarding this entire time, I actually am really intrigued by this game. This is an RPG that I 100% want to come back and play in 1.0 because it's got an intriguing world. I like the art style. I like that it's a little bit different, but also a little bit familiar when it comes to the atmosphere and the tone and the world building. I've always kind of dug Magitek stuff. And so this is definitely barking up a lot of right trees for me. I also like the freedom that it gives you to actually play around with D&D based systems, convincing people off the street to join you or give you what's in their pockets. Like there's a lot of freedom in the systems that they have here that are very interesting. The problem is the game is selling at 35 bucks right now and we have run into some technical issues. So things like characters getting stuck on each other while you're running around and not pathfinding properly, a combat hanging and becoming non-responsive to where I have to restart uh, you know, from a save and, and go again. Things like that have me a little bit worried at that price point. And so this is one of those titles that I think that if they can get it polished up, that's their major issue right now because I think they've got it dead bang when it comes to atmosphere, theme, tone, the gameplay feels good, the animations are nice, the sound is great. Uh, the problem here is just polish. It just needs polish passes. Otherwise, I think people are going to be disappointed having to restart fights and whatnot after paying 35 bucks for an early access. And so... This is one of those ones that I'll probably put on the shelf and wait for 1.0 to check out. I definitely want to play it. I think it's cool. I've enjoyed what I've seen so far. But it's hard to deny that there are some definite polish and bug issues, some of which are game-breaking at the moment, and force you to load saves and whatnot that need to be addressed uh, prior to a commercial release. And so, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, a very interesting RPG called Unfortold Witchstone. I will see you all later. Thanks for stopping on in, and that's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.